Namaskar and welcome to the new edition of Policy Priorities. I am Vartika Nanda. This is a platform to discuss important issues pertaining to different ministries. And in this series today, we are going to discuss one of the most talked about ministries from the point of view of media. Yes, you have guessed right. It is the Information and Broadcasting Ministry and we are fortunate to have with us Shri Praranjan Das Munshi, the minister himself. Shri Munshi will be telling us what his policies and priorities are. Sir, welcome to the show. Before we start the discussion as a backdrop, let's have a look at the profile of the INB Ministry. The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, formed in 1947, is the main regulatory body of Indian media. The Ministry plays a significant part in helping the people to have access to free flow of information. It is responsible for international cooperation in the field of mass media, films and broadcasting. The Information and Broadcasting Ministry is divided into three wings. The Information Wing, the Broadcasting Wing and the Film Wing. The Information Wing under the Joint Secretary, Policy and Administration deals with the policy matters, the print media and the press and publicity requirements of the government. Press Information Bureau is the principal information office that heads the nodal agency of the Government of India. It works to disseminate information to the print and electronic media. Photo Division is the biggest production unit of its kind in the country. Research, Reference and Training Division serves as an information bank and reference center to provide information feeder service. The Publications Division is the largest publication house in the public sector. Directorate of Advertising and Visual Publicity undertakes multimedia advertising and publicity of policies and programs of government. Directorate of Field Publicity started functioning in 1953. Its programs are targeted specially for welfare of the people. Song and Drama Division was set up to tap the abundant folk and traditional means of communication. The Office of the Registrar of Newspapers for India came into being on 1st July 1956 on the recommendation of the first press commission in 1953. The Press Council of India is a statutory autonomous body established for the purpose of preserving the freedom of the press. The Indian Institute of Mass Communication was set up with the objectives to provide training to the information and publicity personnel of central and state governments. The Film Wing under Joint Secretary handles matters relating to the film sector. Through its various units, it is involved in the production and distribution of documentary films required for internal and external publicity. The Films Division is engaged in the production of documentaries and news magazines for publicity of central government programs. Central Board of Film Certification is responsible for certifying the films produced in India as well as outside the country suitable for public exhibition. The National Film Archive of India was established as a media unit of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in 1964. The National Film Development Corporation was incorporated in 1975. 
Film and Television Institute of India was established in the year 1960. It has truly lived up to its objective in the field of imparting training in filmmaking and television program production. The Satyajit Ray Film and Television Institute in Kolkata has been set up to provide the latest education and technological experience in the art and technique of filmmaking. Children's Film Society was formed in 1955 to provide healthy entertainment to the children and young people. The Broadcasting Wing under Joint Secretary handles matters relating to the electronic media. It formulates policies and frames rules and includes regulations for this sector, which includes public service broadcasting, operation of cable television, private television channels, FM channels, etc. Considering a large ambit that the ministry has to cover and a huge responsibility it has to shoulder to disseminate government's policies and programs, it is no surprise that a large number of departments of various ministries are dependent on the Information and Broadcasting Ministry. This is Nazish for Lok Sabha Television. So, we see a very contradictory situation. On the one hand, Commonwealth 2010 is around the corner. India is bidding for 2014 Asian Games. And on the other hand, ERC has ordered the abolition of thousands of posts in INB ministry. In this contradictory situation, how would you define the mission objective of your ministry? And do you think achieving that is becoming impossible? No, I do not think so. First of all, the ERC's recommendations are not selectively for INB ministry. It is overall the whole objective of the government to bring down the number of the uh, persons involved in various ministry and in some cases it was justified, some cases it was not. Nevertheless, in so far as INB ministry is concerned, we are pruned substantially but we will not reduce the number as it is expected by ERC since we are justifying the continuance of your departments and I do think it will not be a big problem for us. Sir, your ministry is broadly divided into three wings, information wing, broadcasting wing and film wing. We will be talking about all these wings. But before that, we would like to know something about the broadcasting policy. In India, we, st we still have a uh, health policy, education policy, but when it comes to broadcasting, still we do not have a holistic broadcasting policy for external and internal broadcasting. What is the reason behind that? Well, I should not say that uh, there is no broadcasting policy, but as people expect a documentation laid in the table of the house, on that way they will judge a policy. Well, in that way, nothing of that kind has yet been done. But I do feel the time has come after the, I should not use the word invasion, after the margins of massive electronic media operation in this stage, internet several important websites that could feed you updated things and the print media revolution with the 26 percent cap of the foreign investment a comprehensive approach on the broadcasting network is required and for that we are considering and examining the aspect of a comprehensive legislation called broadcasting bill yes sir. discussion is at a final stage and hopefully during the budget session mm -hmm. We shall be able to introduce it, broad basing each parameter of the broadcasting policy. Okay, sir. But as far as your information uh, wing is concerned, PIB is considered to be one of the most crucial uh, units of your ministry. Now, when internet is becoming the major source of information, do you think PIB has lost lost its uh, relevance? No, I don't think so. Uh, PIB, on the other hand, I must say, for last six years at a stage, if I take the whole thing. PIB have become the major source of uh, many way Indian information through the internet. Mm -hmm. And it is not PIB who evaluates from internet, it is internet who depends on PIB. Okay, sir. And what about the publication division? 
uh, it brings out about 150 titles every year. Do you have any kind of plans to modernize it or Well, I, it I, I, I snatched the word from you. I am not very happy in the way publication division has been functioning. <coughs> it's the age of better print, yes, better sir. quality paper, better get up and better material and to market PI uh, publication documentation in public with other publishing houses. It needs lot of sophistication, modernization. In fact, I am looking for it and just recently I advised the publication wing that prepare a document of Gandhiji's 100 year Satyagraha program with the most important contribution of the eminent intellectuals printing paper and get up in such a manner it could be an unique document internationally which could be preserved in various parts of the world and to attempt that if you need any shortcomings we shall back you but again we come back publication division also faced a very big threat from the ERC and naturally therefore mm -hmm. they were limping mm -hmm. so I do not want to see that it goes in a limping stage it must come up and I am working very actively before the next budget I think I will get a tremendous support from finance ministry to give a new direction to the publication wing. Okay, And what about books related to mass communication as you rightly said marketing is also a problem. So are there any plans to bring out more See books? Marketing depends on three factors A the price, B the quality and C the materials worth reading and worth reaching to the universities, the colleges as well as to libraries and for use of the people who are going for research work. So that way it is a big challenging job vis-a-vis -vis other private publishing houses. If we can achieve that it would be marketable. If you cannot, well, no use of keeping this division. And so, Information uh, Indian Institute of Mass Communication, that is also part of your ministry and uh, all of us know that it has the potential to become a role model for the third world countries. But this institute also has its problem. For example, there is no director there for the last two years. Uh, looking at many other problems like this, what kind of plans do you have to well, make we it? Well, we are going to appoint the director very soon, maybe before 31st December 2006. There was an attempt to call the interview. I got some positive information that things are not that transparent. I stopped and uh, I strongly feel it should be done before 31st of December. Competent, good person to be chosen as the director who is not, I think at the moment, uh, there to think of other than mass communication because in the past I am sorry I don't name anybody. Each one tried to give a design of his own which is not mass communication. It is his communication with the setup who brought them. So therefore I want to get rid of that club and therefore I am appointing mass director, communication director through proper interview with a transparent track record in the past without mixing with ABC philosophy of any political wing. So you have plans to uh, lift this institution. Uh, but what about the photo division? We know that they, they have a vast archive of uh, still photographs. Yes, yes. But then now everybody is talking about digitization. So are there any plans to make certain changes yes, there yes, also yes. and make it Photo division friendly? got to be digitized. It's a treasure of the government. And I know how rich dividend paid during the visit of King of Saudi. When within 24 hours notice they brought out 55 years back visit documentation of the then King of Saudi. It helped us so much the King of Saudi agreed to sign the protocol which normally a king never signs in any part of the world. Mm -hmm. So that way I thank for a division but we are modernizing it. It also faced the uh, threat of ERC but I am protecting it but at the same time we have to improve the quality arrangements of the photo division particularly the lab and I must say the photo division of India is so important that I can tell you the clients are huge in number to take documentation from photo division and if you can pay the proper price for marketing 
it would be a profitable plus and someday it may not depend also the budgetary support. Okay. And so you have some kind of plans for DAVP also. We know that DAP, DAVP was set up to handle promotional campaigns of different ministries. And we, we have been seeing that there are ministries who launch their own uh, uh, campaigns. What is the reason behind that? No, this? DAVP is not for that. I, I don't agree with this. DAVP obviously uh, categorizes his objective work on three parts. Part one, to take care of the official ad of the government yes, sir. and its program and policies to respective newspaper language and the national dailies. B, yes, sometimes a new policy which is launched by a government or a particular ministry must have to get adequate space so that how the people and readers will know what exactly the policy. You can say, yes, it could be seen in the internet. Who can afford to keep internet and computer in every house in India? Mm. So therefore, be a DAVP's role to convey to the people the message of the government and the policy is not an objectionable thing. Every part of the world, this has happened. I am not saying that we are following the path of any regimented regime of the world, but I do feel what parliament speaks and what government formulates, that should get adequate coverage in terms of policy by DAVP. So, like DAVP, DFP is also considered to be a very potent weapon of uh, the ministry, but it is also felt that it is underutilized. We are still it using traditional methods. It is, it is Underfinanced. Underfinanced. I should say. So, what so. plans do you have because for this? Because the government took it from the previous government, they have been planning how to close this field publicity wing, how to close the photo division, how to close the publication. And that is why not only lethargy, a total demoralization was prevailing in the wing, and step by step money was cut. After I assumed the office, I took a determined decision. I shall not allow any of this wing to close. On the other hand, give a new direction and dimension to go to the masses with more public campaign of the awareness of certain things. For instance, HIV AIDS, the polio, the anti-dowry program, the cause of the domestic violence and its impact. All these things should go not to the urban towns, to the down to the village. Mm -hmm. And that could only be done by DFP and that is why I am submitting a special note before the finance minister justifying okay. why I need more money for this. And you are hopeful for that? I am confident. <laughs> okay. We would like to know something about the Press Council of India also, sir. Uh, it is a, a statutory body established for preserving the freedom of the press and also as the watchdog of the press. It has advisory rule, but what do they do when their advice is not followed by the print media, especially the private print media? And PCI does not have any mandate for el electronic media or internet. What can be done to improve? I will answer the first last question first. For electronic media and <coughs> the internet, we are coming with the specific provision in the broadcasting bill. Yes, sir. <coughs> Some kind of regulatory mechanism by themselves, not imposed by us. In so far as present status of press council, it is up to press council to recommend the government whether they need more teeth. We can't interfere. We never try to interfere in press council activities. If press council feels they are not sufficiently teeth and armed to deal a situation, let them write to us, we will bring legislation. But we so much should not bring a legislation. It will be treated as we are interfering in the press, interfering in the functioning of the press council. So, what do you think? What, <coughs> what are the reasons that they are not coming up with such kind of I do not know the reason, but I did say to the chairperson, chairman the other day, Justice Roy, if you feel you are not sufficiently strong to deal with the situation, you can advise us what you need. But sumo too, we shall not advise anything to you because press council has an objective, neutral attitude in the matters of print media. Their government necessarily should not impose any particular will of government on press council. Rather, if press council come forward with the suggestions, we can try to implement. We are also now joined by Ms. Sevinti Nainan, who is a well-known media critic. Ma'am, welcome to the show. In this segment, we shall discuss about the broadcasting wing. But before that, let's have a look at this report. Draft of Proposed Broadcasting Services Regulation Bill 2006. Promote, facilitate and develop carriage and content of broadcasting. 
provide for regulation of broadcasting services in India. To offer variety of entertainment, news, views and information in fair, objective and competitive manner. Regulate content for public viewing. Provide for establishment of independent authority to be known as Broadcast Regulatory Authority of India. The long-awaited broadcasting bill is finally expected to become a reality in the forthcoming winter session of Parliament. The bill intends to regulate the content of TV channels and lay down certain ground regulations for them. But this is what the bill intends to achieve. Proposed Broadcasting Services Regulation Bill seeks to provide legislative sanction to guidelines on regulation for TV channels cover uplink or downlink for private FM radio and community radio, direct to home, teleport, incorporate rules about existing cable TV networks, Regulation Act 1995, draw up appropriate rules for licensing of cable operators. Broadcasters are waiting anxiously for this law, which has been under consideration in various forms for over a decade now. But it is only the forthcoming winter session that shall decide the destiny of this bill. Pallavi Sharma for Lok Sabha Television. Uh, that was a small report on broadcasting bill. Ms. Nanan, would you, you would like to ask something? Yeah, I'd like to ask Mr. Das Munshi why at this juncture has the government felt the need to bring this bill and then has gone through so many drafts already? There are two aspects of it. Aspect oh. one, freedom of press is not merely a freedom whatever you like you to do. At the same time, freedom of press, government is not here to policing. Government cannot place in a democratic society a policing job on the press. That is end of democracy. Broadcasting bill is required because of five things. A, B, C, D, E, I, T. One, the kind of participation of the cross ownership is mm -hmm. gaining ground. B, a kind of monopoly accumulation is also coming up. C, the kind of channels that are operating India and foreign. Every country you go, if I take my channel to London, I am to perform certain obligation. Mm. No one is free from any obligation. Those obligations are here flouted for not having any specific code. Mm. Four, which is very important, the advertisement code which are not honored at all and flouted every day. How many days? You will give the notice. And five at the end of the day. Such kind of complaints and such kind of confusions should not be controlled by the government, should be taken care of by a kind of press council sort of body, by themselves. So they themselves decide in which direction will go. This minimum thing unless you do in a country like India, huge one, Mm. of so many things. Sitting in Delhi, what do you know what is happening in a cable na network and channel in the village of Sikkim? So that is why we thought of converging all, we should bring a comprehensive legislation and that draft should not be put into the parliament suddenly. It should be interacted with the media first, the stakeholders, take their session, we put it to the website for a long time to get their views and then come back with a, with a consensus mode of the media in India and go to the parliament. But cross media, uh, what specifically disturbs you about what you see? Can you give concrete examples of how well, you it, see it, its influence it, it growing? Is, it is not in, in fair as a minister of information to take the name of any newspaper. You are intelligent enough, you know, who are having increasing control on the FM radios, on the uh, television and the print media, both foreign and Indian. And I have a fear if this train gain consolidation, the language newspaper of the local regional television channel will be at Geopardy very soon. Okay. So we would like to know something about community radio also. We have been hearing lots of uh, success it stories is clear about by community the cabinet. radios. Yes. But do you think this will tilt the situation dramatically? I do hope that uh, the community radio will make a new revolution in terms of the local aspirations on the cultural side. B, the educational institution is extremely important and see the Krishi Vigyan Kendra, the knowledge of the farming community mm. varies to Andhra to Maharashtra, Maharashtra to Sikkim 
uh, on these three aspects, it will have a tremendous impact. And to sustain them, we have also accommodated five minutes out of one hour a kind of commercial ad. There are many other issues to be discussed. But before that, we are showing you a special film prepared by the Prasar Bharti. <laughs> Radio presents Morning News.